Today, I want to show you one of the wildest things I've ever seen inside DaVinci Resolve. And for some of you, this is legitimately game changing. We're going to show off an extremely, extremely cool workflow for editing so, so fast, especially when working with live media. And that can mean a few other things that we'll get to. But first, what's going on over here? This is a Twitch stream uh, from the streamer Smallant. He's playing Pokemon. It's super cool. But I want you to put yourself in the position of Small Ant's editor. I don't know if he cut this up between streams, but it sure looks like that timer is uh, almost at six and a half hours. Let's for the fun of it, assume that that is this one current stream. <laughs> Not unheard of in streaming territory. If you are his editor and you just need to pull clips for social media or YouTube shorts, what do you do? Do you wait until he is done streaming? Uh, maybe he's recording locally and he can send you an OBS recording. And then you have a six and a half hour video on your timeline to sort through. Blech. What if there was a better way? What if instead of watching Small Ant on Twitch and then later editing, what if you could just watch him in DaVinci Resolve? Sure. Now I will try to time out our latency in a moment, but what's important to know is that uh, Resolve is reading this file as it is growing. So anytime you can go back and watch another part of the stream, this is when we had an ad break, um, <laughs> but you can watch, you can even watch on double or quadruple speed if you are getting through a slow zone in order to catch up and watch live again. And then at the very end, you can see it's writing this data or it's reading the data as it's being written. So if you come to the end, you can get pretty close and start playing and you'll see whether you're in the buffer of whether you know it starts writing new information before you hit the end of the clip. It looks like I'm in a good little spot here. I tried to get as close as I can. Let's see what our latency is. I'll try to find something to time off of next time something changes, like someone's got to get like knocked out or something, right? Okay, when this goes down, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was ten. I've measured this as low as five or six. I will note that as this clip grows, it gets harder to get like really fine towards the end of the clip. But with how fast the rest of this process is, I think a few seconds, give or take, you know, we can work with that. But the real question is, what's next? You might notice I have this other window over here. Um, that is actually the timeline I have opened down here. And this is vertical. What if I wanted to pull a clip from this stream and instantly send it out to socials? Well, I could be watching here. At any point, I can set an eye for an okay, endpoint. It will um, keep playing. It seems like 2,600 people are asleep. Cool, that's a neat little clip, but I said an I for an endpoint, O for an outpoint. And now uh, with function F9, I will drop that on my timeline. And you'll notice I was previewing this in the full resolution. Note, I was previewing that because I was using the source tape. If you have this on source clip, it will crop to your timeline resolution, haha. -ha. Uh, but source tape lets you see the entire thing. But now on my timeline, it, it's cropped, right? It's auto scaling to fill. But here's the other super exciting thing. Of course, we have that audio. Seems like 2,600. Now I can open up my power bins, come to my vertical presets. Oh, I do need to toggle this off source tape. And I can select this footage, select my Smant vertical preset here, right click, link to referenced fusion composition. And wow, this entire clip perfectly formatted for vertical. These vertical presets are something I made a little while ago. They're a completely different product. You can jump into the Fusion page uh, where you will see, one, how it was built, but two, all the custom controls that are really easy uh, to change around. So if you want any of this changed, you could do it. I give away versions of these you can start with, or uh, I will make presets for you if you want. But that's not what we're talking about in this video. Uh, we're back on our edit page timeline, and boom, uh, this is instantly rearranged. And hey, let's go a step further. Timeline, AI tools, create subtitles from audio. Uh, I will go double line, sure, create this. It's just a few seconds, shouldn't take that long. Oh, look, and there we are, and hey, and you'll see those here, but hey, why not come up to uh, effects, titles, subtitles animated, and toss that right on, and now we have, oh, and those are at the bottom here, so why don't I just move those up, and scale them up, and then hey, but you're gonna fall asleep soon. Okay, okay. Um, it seems like 2,600 people are asleep. We're in a pretty good spot. 
at that point, hop over to the deliver page where you could ship this right off to YouTube, right off to TikTok. You could review it there or hey, even push it live and you could have social clips being pushed out a, a matter of a few minutes at most from when it was live. You don't even need to stop your OBS recording. Hopefully you see how cool this is. Of course, for something like this, pulling clips from a stream, you know, that's its own little niche cottage industry. But what's cool is that this tech is kind of all over the place. I showed off doing something similar with the uh, ATEM, this guy, little ATEM ISO Pro. If this is connected to network attached storage, Resolve could read that. This is the ISO version, which means it records the inputs separately. So say you were running an event and you had four different cameras, you could actually save those four different cameras individually and bring all of those clips into Resolve, have them synced in time, edit clips of your event while it's still going on. And very, very cool uh, is this also rolling out to cameras. Notably, uh, the Blackmagic camera app, which is on phones, but then even in a handful of their cinema cameras, as soon as you click record on that, it can start generating a proxy and sending that to the cloud. And you can see uh, camera clips appear in Resolve as they are being recorded somewhere else, or the clip will finish and then only make the proxy and upload. That's very cool. I'm gonna get into some specifics for people who want it. And I've gotta give a shout out to uh, one editor. Um, I was working the uh, DaVinci Resolve and Blackmagic Design booth at TwitchCon, and this editor came up and like, told me this was possible and then I had to dive in and figure some things out. Um, but I didn't catch that editor's name. If you happen to stop by, leave a comment and we will all give you the thanks. But really the linchpin here is in OBS. Uh, I'm gonna stop this recording now because that is just that doing that thing. But in settings, in output, again, this is what worked for me. You can like explore, uh, but the important thing is this recording format has to be .ts. Reading these was added to resolve somewhere in the last year from when I was exploring it uh, previously with the ATEM, I believe. I have audio on AAC. I'm not sure how important that is, uh, but I also wanna know this does work with multiple audio tracks. So I could be recording something and have like my voiceover and bring that in with a separate track. But on my system, what was also very important uh, was this video encoder. We have all these other options. Normally I would be on one of these hardware options. When I used those, only the audio was uh, brought into Resolve. I needed to change this video encoder to software. But then at that point, um, back on my edit page, I just had to open up the folder where that was being written. You know, let me go, go ahead and start again. Start recording again. And then this new file that just got up and running, I can just drag in here. It has that little red dot, which means it's live. And if I double click that, I uh, will close this inspector. That will be back. I'll click this button to get back to this full screen option. Back will be here. And I believe we can go and watch this as it's being written again. Right. Just watch this and resolve, pull clips, put subtitles on them, okay. ship them. And like, you could get this down to such a science, but this is just an extremely cool thing that I know will make some people very excited. If you don't think this is cool, I don't know, at least reading files as they're being written, the, the camera side of things, that should make lots of people excited. You could have a crew out filming an interview and just have one editor back in the office. And while the other crew is you know, wrapping up all their cables and driving back to the office, someone could be building a rough cut. Super slick. Other important things to note. Um, stuff like that, that camera system uh, plays into uh, Blackmagic Cloud. I'm doing all of this locally just because this file is being written on my native computer. But what about actually getting the video? Uh, because yes, it is playing on my laptop going through a USB capture card. That was just to showcase easier in this video because a small hurdle can be audio. So I have it playing here uh, so that I can just only send audio through the XLR, which is being read by OBS here. So uh, while it's recording, it's not actually playing the audio, but this entire system can work on a single computer. The way I had to set this up in earlier testing is that I had one sort of Chrome browser window open for Twitch or YouTube Live I was also testing. Again, it works for anything. And in OBS, I was able to use these window capture devices, which does also provide a new audio capture just for that window. Again, it was very funky, but what I had to do was to then come into my system sounds and actually, if I open this up, no, not something like that, something like this. Um, I had to change the output device for Chrome 
to something that wasn't actually attached to something like my monitor, which of course has like awful speakers. But if I set the output to that, then like I wouldn't be hearing the live stream as it, as it was happening. I could only choose to hear it if I, once I was watching it in Resolve, if that makes sense. Again, getting into the weeds, but I know some people will be interesting. Managing audio can be a hurdle you will have to figure out on your specific system. Um, if you want any other info, ask me and maybe uh, if I missed enough, I'll make another video or I'll answer questions in the comments. But if nothing else, I think this is the world's fastest Twitch clip editing workflow. And that seems pretty cool. I think it's cool at least. Hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.